Arch Motorcycles' flagship bike brings innovative design, crushing performance and artistic flair together for buyers looking for something, shall we say, a little more exclusive. Proprietary engine management components and an S and S twin cam V twin drive the bike with over 120 pound feet of torque to work with, so it's far from being just a showy curb ornament. This ride is the first fruit born of the partnership between actor Keanu Reeves and self-taught engineer Gart Hollinger. Keanu's influence and star power is reflected in the first two letters of the KRGT1 moniker, but he is far from just being a celebrity face man for a company. This whole project got started when Mr. Reeves decided to build his own bike, and the relationship developed with Mr. Hollinger during this project gave birth to this bike, sort of. The original set the tone for the production model, but every part was reworked for the limited edition production model. Designed the overall look of the thing is almost CM Punk with its ultra-modern Euro Street Fighter frame wrapped around a push road actuated V-twin derived from an over 100-year-old engine design. A flat face cam cover and low-profile primary drive kind of help tie the engine to the frame, and they accentuate the visual clash of technology that makes this such an interesting bike. Inverted front forks and a smallish, carbon fiber front fender make the KRGT1 look racy right out of the gate. A sport bike like Headlamp houses high output lead high and low beams, those eye searing and much maligned blue headlights and a teensy wind deflector caps the light can to form a recess for the programmable Moto Gadget Motoscope Pro digital instrumentation. The split fuel tank halves add up to a total capacity of 5 gallons and incredibly, are milled from billet aluminum. While the shape forms a knee pocket that looks similar to some of Moto Guzzi's current tanks, it is it for a very different reason. It makes room for a pocket between the tanks that serves as the air box with the air cleaner nestled up atop the downdraft intake, a very clean solution to the ugly side breather cleaners we usually see on Harley type engines. The upper lines follow the gentle arch of the backbone down to a very scooped seat before tapering off to almost nothing, and the taillight and turn signals come built under the reflective tail fairing for an ultra clean ascent that comes to an almost alien looking point and precludes the need for lens light housings. Foot controls can be mounted in either the mid mount or forward position, but no matter where your feet are, the butt to bar line pulls the upper body forward and encourages a cruiser slouch while leaving room to tuck in for a more aggressive posture. Appropriate for a power cruiser model, don't you think? Chassis the company's namesake arch makes an appearance in the tubular steel backbone that stays visible sandwiched between the tanks and defines the upper line shape. Billet steel and billet aluminum parts make up the rest of the single down tube double cradle frame, and a billet aluminum swing arm with lightweight, titanium axle adjusters completes the standing rigging. Hollow axles, and carbon fiber fenders keep unsprung weight down at both ends of the bike, a fact that helps the fully adjustable, 43mm, used, Olin's front forks and fully adjustable, coil over, Olin's Minoshock tame the motion at the wheels. Carbon fiber rims mount a Michelin 120 70 SR19 front hoop and a massive, 240 40 SR18 rear. Handling is stable with a 30 degree rake and 5 inches of trail on a 68 inch wheelbase, and surprisingly eager in the corners in spite of the wide rear tire and steering geometry. Dual, 6 pot, opposed piston, monoblock calipers bite the big front brake discs and a four-pot caliper slows the rear with no ABS or brake linking to clutter up the works. This is one bike that probably could benefit from ABS, cause I've seen what over braking with a pair of opposed, six-pot calipers looks like, and it ain't pretty. You had better respect that front brake lever, or it will bite you. Drive a train at 124 cubic inches, 2032 cc, the T124 mil is one of the biggest V-twins on the road. Built specifically for Arch by s and the engine is more or less an HD twin cam clone with Arch's proprietary, downdraft, 
fuel injected engine management system on Overwatch. Not only do the looks of the 45 degree mill peg this bike as an American cruiser, but they bring that old school vibe that both clashes with, and complements, the modern sport bike exterior. That's not all this plant brings to the table, oh no. It cranks out a generous 121 pound and 70 pence feet of torque, backed up by 122 horsepower. I don't have to tell you that's enough power to scratch the itch when you feel like getting twisty with it. A six-speed Baker transmixer comes built to Arch's specifications, and boasts a compact, high-torque main shaft with a chain final drive to make the connection to the rear tire. A two-into-one exhaust collector feeds an upswept muffler, but in spite of that, the KRGT1 suffers from a lack of cornering clearance even with the silencer out of the way. As with the brakes, we have no traction control or rider mode bollocks to muddy up the waters, just clean, honest, basic controls. Price though the price tag is a bit of a shock at first, if you consider what it costs to build the bike it starts to make sense. Between buying billet aluminum at $3 per pound and selling the scrap for 50 cents per pound, the fuel tank alone costs over $1,300 to make so the $78,000 sticker comes as less of a shock. Still out of reach for most of us, but exclusivity can be a big selling point. You can place an order with the company for $15,000 earnest money.